Hey, welcome back to Atreyu News. I'll be working out of town for approximately a month, so this will be my last one until I return, I would say. Trump's administration cuts off the UN. The Trump administration has cut off funding to the UN Population Fund. ABCnews.go.com reports the Trump administration said Monday it was cutting off U.S. funding to the United Nations Agency for Reproductive Health, accusing the agency of supporting population control programs in China that include coercive abortion. <coughs> Excuse me. By halting assistance to the UN Population Fund, the Trump administration is following through on promises to let socially conservative policies that President Donald Trump embraced in his campaign determine the way the U.S. government operates and conducts itself in the world. Though focused on forced, abor forced abortion, a concept opposed by liberals and conservatives alike, the move to invoke kemp an Amendment was sure to be perceived as a gesture to anti-abortion advocates and other conservative interests. The UN Fund will lose $32.5 million in funding from the 2017 budget, the State Department said, with the funds shifted to similar programs at the U.S. Agency for International Development. It wasn't immediately clear whether the UN Fund would also lose out on tens of millions of additional dollars it has typically received from the United States in non-core funds. Under a three-day decade old law, the U.S. is barred from funding organizations that aid or participate in forced abortion or involuntary sterilization. It's up to each administration to determine which organizations meet the condition. The UN Population Fund has typically been cut off during Republican administrations and had its funding resume when Democrats controlled the White House. Because the Democrat leadership, they're like demons in human skin. They want us to kill ourselves. Something that gives them strength gets power from abortions. It's completely insane and off the wall. And in my opinion, if, if abortion had never been invented, then I would not see the demographic shift in the West being quite so severe. You wouldn't really need immigrants if you're keeping your kids not killing them now, would you? President Trump has just changed Silicon Valley forever. In a step to combat the H-1B visa fraud, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security has released a new guidance stating computer programmers are no longer eligible for H-1B visas. What this means for Silicon Valley is that they may no longer be able to use H-1B visas as an excuse to pay lower wages to immigrants. See, it has nothing to do with human rights. It has nothing to do with equality, any of that. The stuff they push does not resemble their true intention. It never has. It's about money. Screwing the little guy. It's always been the same. From Reuters, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security announced steps on Monday to prevent the fraudulent use of H-1B visas used by employers to bring in specialized foreign workers temporarily, which appeared to fall short of President Donald Trump's campaign promises to overhaul the program. Overhaul the program. A White House official said Trump may still do more on the program. Trump had promised to end the lottery system for H-1B visas, which gave each applicant an equal chance at 65,000 positions each year. Lobbyists for businesses who rely on H-1B visas commonly use the tech sector, had expected Trump to upend the lottery in favor of a system that prioritized workers who are highly skilled and would be highly paid in the United States. See, they want to take every dollar that we have. It makes no difference that they control all the wealth already. It's not good enough for them. It's like a drug. They're addicts. The more they have, the more they want. The lottery for fiscal year 2018 opened on Monday without changes. The start of the lottery was seen by those watching the issue as the unofficial deadline for the Trump administration to enact H-1B visa reform, and the failure to meet the deadline signals that Trump promised overhaul of the system may be off the table or long delayed. More oversight is a good start, but employers can still use the program legally to depress wages and replace American workers. 
That falls short of the promises President Trump made to protect American workers, said Peter Rubio, a spokesman for Numbers USA, a Washington-based group that advocates for limiting immigration into the United States. The Trump administration has taken other steps to crack down on H-1B visa abuse, such as issuing a Justice Department warning of, to employers and announcing plans to increase transparency on applicants. These are important first steps to bring more accountability and transparency to the H-1B system. A White House official said the administration is considering several additional options for the president to use his existing authority to ensure federal agencies more rigorously enforce all aspects of the program. Tech companies rely on the program to bring in workers with special skills and have lobbied for an expansion of the number H-1B visas awarded. Proponents of limiting legal immigration, including Trump's senior advisor, Stephen Miller, have argued the program gives jobs that Americans could fill to foreign workers at a less expensive cost. Well, of course. The measures announced by the DHS on Monday focus on site visits by U.S. authorities to employers who use H-1B visas. In future site visits, U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services agents will investigate incidents where an employer's basic business information cannot be validated. Businesses that have a higher ratio of H-1B employees compared with U.S. workers and employers petitioning for H-1B workers who work off-site. Well, that's good news. Keep the jobs in America. It's not really that hard. Every other country tries to do that. Yet when the United States does it, it's deemed racist, even though to keep jobs in your country is not actually racist. See the logic behind some of these idiots on the left? They're completely mentally ill. So here comes the part where we could actually witness the European Union collapse. On April 23rd of this year, this woman, Marine Le Pen, is going to shock France, I believe. She says, We are the dawn of change. Le Pen urges French youths to vote for real alternative. And so it is. I know when the Dutch election didn't go our way, the globalists said that, you know, the people on the right are crushed. You know, nationalists are crushed. But really what they're doing, they're grasping on and they're grabbing on to whatever they can because they know it's a sinking ship. April 23rd, Marine Le Pen is going to shock the world much like Trump did, in my opinion. And I won't be around to see it, but I got a really good feeling about this. And I'm convinced at this point, regardless of what happens, the European Union will collapse. There's no going against it now. People are really shifting to wanting their sovereign nations back. They want their own laws back and they want their own borders back. So, pretty exciting. Speaking to around 2,000 mostly young supporters in Bordeaux, the Front National Leader said, Vote, we all feel it. We are at the dawn of change of civilization. And so true it is. Le Pen told the crowd she wants to make sure that young French people can live and work in France. As she outlined her promise to construct more student accommodation, increase housing benefits for under 27s, and introduce tax breaks for businesses employing young people. So I say, God bless us, God be with us, and Godspeed.